Hello. I hope you are fine wherever you are watching me from. My name is Teacher Ibrahim. This is our lesson number 40. In lesson number 39, we were looking at the types of muscles, where, whereby we were able to realize that there are three types of muscles. And now, this being the 40th lesson, we are going to look at Form 3 work. There is a topic known as ecology. We will uh, be able to define the term ecology and we will also be able to define the terminologies which are used in this topic ecology. Welcome. The term ecology refers to the study of living organisms in relation to their surroundings. We may also say that ecology is the study of interrelationship between living organisms and their surrounding. When we try to look at how beneficial a tree is to a monkey, that is still falling under ecology. Remember, this monkey may also be important to this uh, tree and uh, such kind of relationships. When we look at them, we are handling ecology as a topic. There are various aspects within the environment which may end up affecting the life of an organism either directly or indirectly. We, uh, let us look at these terminologies here so that we can see uh, their meanings and how they are used up. The first two terminologies are otecology and synecology. Otecology refers to the study of a single species in a habitat while synecology refers to the study of more than one species. When an individual gets into a habitat and uh, uh, starts to study a single species, for example, when you go into the jungle and study the species known as um, Panthera leo, that is the lion, then we say that you are studying otecology. While when you study more than one, maybe you study Panthera leo, that is the lion, Panthera tigris, that is the tiger, and maybe Panthera pardas, then uh, that is the leopard. We say that you are handling synecology. That is, those are the first two terms. Let me get uh, to the second term is uh, referred to as biosphere. Biosphere refers uh, to the study. Uh, biosphere refers to any part of the earth or atmosphere which is occupied by living organism or you can say which is inhabited by living organisms ecosphere may also be referred to as uh, a biosphere may also be referred to as ecosphere as long as life can be supported in whichever part of the earth or either the atmosphere we refer to that as biosphere or Ecosphere. Let me move to the third term, that is habitat. Term number three. Habitat refers to a place where an organism lives. If that organism lives in water, then we will say that uh, that is an aquatic habitat. If an organism is living on land, we say that it's a terrestrial habitat. And for that habitat to qualify, to uh, be referred to as a perfect habitat, it must be having some uh, conducive environmental factors which enable an organism, an organism to survive there comfortably. And if it is uh, having some uh, non-conducive factors, then an organism may not survive there. It may tend to move to another different locality so as to find uh, the the conducive environmental factors so as to enable it survive in that given habitat. Let me move to the fourth term, which is ecological nike. Term number four. Ecological nike refers to the position occupied by an organism in a habitat. This position may also include the space that it's occupying and the role that it's playing within the uh, uh, certain habitat. For example, when you talk of a monkey which lives in the jungle, 
It is actually, uh, it lives on treetops and uh, this monkey is benefiting from the tree because it's providing habitat to the monkey. And remember, the same monkey is also beneficial to the plant because when the animal, when this animal provides its droppings, they will uh, decompose into the soil to form manure, which will still be absorbed by this plant. Hence, they are benefiting from one another. Therefore, when we can talk of ecological nike of the plant in such kind of habitat, we say that it, uh, it is uh, providing a shelter to the monkey. Uh, the, same mon uh, the same tree can also be providing food to the monkey when the monkey feeds on its leaves or maybe its fruits or maybe some part of the body of this plant, then there is still the ecological nike of the tree. Ecological nike of the monkey in this case is to provide manure to the plant in such kind of, an, uh, of a habitat. The fifth and the sixth term, I didn't write them here because the spellings appear to be quite obvious. The sixth term is population uh, and the fifth one is community. Population refers to the total number of organisms which belong to the same species within a certain habitat at a particular period of time. When you go into a certain habitat and uh, identify a specific species of organisms, count them and note the number down, we refer to that as a population. Therefore, in a certain uh, habitat, we may be having the population of monkeys, we may be having the population of, of uh, antelopes, the population of giraffes. When you bring them all together, then they form a community. Therefore, we can define the term community as the total number of organisms which belong to various species and they are found within a certain habitat within a particular period of time. Therefore, it is quite obvious that various communities form a sing uh, various population rather form a single community. So we have so many populations so as to come up with a single community. Term number seven is biomass. Biomass uh, refers to the total dry weight of a living organism or the total dry weight of living organisms within a certain uh, trophic level. When we talk of trophic levels, these are the feeding levels, but we will come to look at them in our next uh, topic or uh, in our next subtopic when we'll be talking about um, the food chain and the food web. The total dry weight of living organism within a certain trophic level can be obtained when they have been, uh, when they have been dried up or maybe when the water has been removed from their tissues. When you take, uh, the, um, when you take the, maybe two, um, let me talk of which animal, maybe when you take two elephants and you dry them up, when they are already dead, you dry them up, then you weigh their tissues without water, we say that that is their biomass. When you say that um, the two, uh, two, uh, two elephants have got two tons after they have been dried up, then we say that their biomass is equivalent to two tons. That is the biomass of those two uh, elephants. <coughs> Let me move to the next one. That is term number eight. We call it carrying capacity. Carrying capacity refers to the total number of organisms that a certain habitat can comfortably support without depletion of resources. When we talk of examples whereby we are having a one hectare piece of land which has been occupied by giraffes and the total number of giraffes that can comfortably survive in this uh, one hectare piece of land is uh, maybe 20 giraffes, then we say that the carrying capacity of that uh, one hectare piece of land is uh, those 20 giraffes. 
when the number exceeds the normal uh, the the number exceeds the required uh, the required figure then we say that uh, it uh, their population has exceeded the carrying capacity that is required and if it is a, a lower number compared to the carrying capacity that is required then um it can still be able to accommodate the number very comfortably uh, let me move to the last uh, terminology that is referred to as the ecosystem the word system refers to any uh, instruments substances or a group of individuals who come together to perform a certain role in common with a specific objective when we talk of an ecosystem, we are referring to a unit which comprises of both living and non-living factors whose interaction leads to self-sustaining system. Let me give out an example. An example of an ecosystem uh, comprised of maybe a lion, um, an antelope, grass, and maybe, yeah, let me talk of these three. An antelope, lion, grass. When we talk of these three, the function of this grass is to provide food to the antelope. When the antelope obtains this food, um, their population may definitely increase because they will be giving birth from time to time. And maybe when the number continues to increase, the lion may also need food and it will feed on some of the antelopes this is an example of ecosystem and the three that i've mentioned are all living organisms but non-living factors here may include soil onto which the grass may be growing and uh, apart from that we may be also be having some uh, non-living factors such as oxygen which is required by both these three organisms that i have mentioned we may also be having some non-living factors such as uh, temperature which is also a factor which is de which determines survival of these organisms this ecosystem comprises of both living and non-living factors and their interaction leads to self-sustaining system when i talk of self marks the end of lesson number 40 thank you for watching the video please remember to like share and subscribe let's meet in lesson number 41 whereby i'll be talking about the factors in an ecosystem thank you